Steve and I were ready for a little break. It's been a long week and we've been working hard and we heard there was an RV show in town. So we're gonna go check it out. Or maybe buy a piano. This is our first RV show. We've never been to one before. We're not quite sure what to expect. But as you know, we have stopped looking for Class A's and Class C's now that we got a van. So we're looking for something that's a bumper pull. Hopefully that has good ground clearance, that's built well, that's important to us, has good visibility, and uh, doesn't look like it's 20 years old. We might also step inside a Class A or C just for fun, but we're here for trailers today. Let's check out this Keystone Bullet Premier. It's 22 feet, I think. Cute little guy. Looks like you can enter the bedroom on this side, too. I like the floor plan. Me too. But the decor kind of looks like a Best Western hotel room had a baby with a Persian rug. Overall, there's not a ton of windows in here, it kind of feels like. At least compared to some of the other travel trailers we've been looking at, more like uh, Airstream style. I really do like the floor plan. I think it's a good use of space. Let's have a look inside this Keystone Springdale. It's a 26-footer. Wow. Even though I like the simplicity and idea of not having a slide out, it's less to go wrong, you can't deny how much more room it creates. Not great, but not terrible. Honestly, even though the other one is smaller, I like it better. You like the other one better? Yeah. I like the windows this has. I think it just has more windows because it's bigger. This one's big, but man, this is $24,000. This is a lot of trailer for the money. We've been pretty disappointed with bumper pulls, but I think Keystone's doing something right on these. Well, <laughs> These are the first two we've looked at and we're already surprised. I guess it really goes to show again that we're not the age demographic they're trying to appeal to in terms of style because you look at things like this cheesy border. If anything, it costs them less to make this thing look better. Um, it's little things like that that it's just like, ugh, come on. These are gross. Rather not have those. All this junk. Why do you need curtains if you've got blinds? Are we, we're just trying to hide the, oh, they Velcro off, that's good, we could remove them. I just discovered something I love. Look at the size of this window. Open that up real quick, babe. We don't wanna feel like we're living in a tiny little box, especially when we're boondocking. That is a huge window. Thumbs up to Keystone for that. All right, this is a Keystone Cougar 28 footer. This we learned is called, it's not vacuum sealed, it's hot rolled or hot pressed or something like that. They squish it in this machine and the heat activates the glue. Looks like fiberglass, is this fiberglass? Fiberglass, all right, let's go check it out inside. Up front, we have a ton of storage and it's kind of cool to see this linoleum. It's kind of wavy, but it at least looks nice. A ton of pass-through storage there. Okay, I love that shelf. Love what they've got going on there. I actually like the dark wood. I know Teresa doesn't. This has got to go. I mean, maybe my grandma would like that, but not me. Um, even though it has a pass-through, it's got a half bed storage compartment under here, which is cool. I'm digging this design. Got a fantastic fan up there huge bathroom look at this so we've got the shower with the little seat 
I like this. I really am surprised how much I like this. Feels like wood. We like wood. Wow, so yeah, this is made by Keystone, even though it's a cougar, so it looks a lot like the one we were just in, except the decor is a lot less nasty, which, it's a foot longer too. I actually like this more. We've got our nasty hard back on dinettes that we absolutely hate. So what we'd probably do is cut that out and make it a desk for editing videos. I'm really digging the big window they've got. Lots of windows in here, lots of light. So, I'm not a huge fan of slides, but if we're gonna have a slide, I like that it's big enough that it actually gives some more room in here. I don't know, it feels really good. The These look nice. This one is selling for about 29,000, which is awesome after you've been shopping for Airstreams that are in the $85,000 price range. Not bad, I, I think we could do this. Okay, so we've kind of lost a little bit of faith in a lot of the bumper pulls we've seen, but now we're seeing a little more variety and I'm thinking we judged too hastily. There's some decent stuff out there. Again, this. I mean, honestly, I would say like, ditch that, ditch the crown molding and buy some nicer textiles. <laughs> like. Just rearrange the budget a little bit. <laughs> this is a rock star trailer with a little patio for your band. We were just walking around and we saw this cute little guy and then got to the front of it and we're like, that's a class A. It's so cute. It's uh, by Thor, it's around 24 feet. But just had never seen class A that small. Thor Axis. Oh, excuse me. Come on in. That's cool. So it looks like these are two single beds. Oop. They have this little thing. I can make it all one. This little bed up here comes down on these slides and you got more sleeping up there. Pretty cool. It's built on a Ford E350 chassis with the V10 motor. And we've got an awesome little laptop place here. Not what we're looking for, but we just thought it was fun and we'd show you guys. That's cool. That's something you should check out. The the Thor Axis class who knows whatever. It's kind of a in-betweener. Hey, we made some new friends, Ian and Heather and their beautiful children. And they are also going to be hey guys. planning to full-time RV in the next year or so. Yeah, absolutely. So our plan is to take off at some time uh, next year, hopefully around July possibly July 4th as uh, Independence Day we call it so uh, look for us at uh, a life that's worth living dot com that'll be up and running as soon as we possibly can get it going that's so cool to run into people in our area who have kind of the same plan uh, they've got a couple kids so they're gonna road school which is cool to me because I was homeschooled growing up um, so yeah now we've got friends that we can meet up with on the road We've decided we don't want aluminum sided, so we're gonna start skipping over this. This is a Coachman Apex Ultralight 25 and a half footer. Check it out. In this 25 foot size, it's pretty nice because you usually get a separate bedroom, which is important to us. Um, I'm usually scared on the light models because they're usually using lower quality materials, but this one looks good. Wow, pretty big wardrobe there. Another half storage under there. Bathroom's a little tiny. Not too bad though. And then coming through here, we got a slide. Another uncomfortable dinette. I swear, nobody that designs these has ever sat in one. Granted, this is a $22,000 trailer, so it's gonna be cheap. I don't like how tiny the windows are. I feel kind of cramped. I don't like the slide design. Yeah. Action. All right, this is a Coachman Freedom Express 24 and a half footer. One cool thing right off the bat, we hate seeing TVs and speakers and stuff outside. 
But this is cool. Got the little Coleman propane stove here, which allows you to cook outside. I like that. Kind of cool with the rear kitchen. I haven't seen this yet. Nice that it has at least a little bit of windows there. And we got a big slide and a nasty dinette. But only on this side is it nasty. So, that actually looks semi comfortable, except that it's straight up and down. A lot of storage in here, a ton. And I don't mind that this doesn't fully close. I don't, we got this privacy curtain, which I actually prefer this over those plastic ones. I really don't like those, but not bad. We got a half storage in here. Not bad. Let's see what the bathroom looks like. Pretty standard bathroom. Toilet on the right. Overall, not bad. Quality's not blowing me away, but I'm not seeing too many issues. Uh-oh, we got trim falling off. But, here's what I'm gonna say. No nasty swirl wallpaper. We've got this little design here, but you look all over, it's just the wall. Thank you, thank you, thank you for not ruining that. Not bad. The retro look is definitely coming back and it's cool to see some makers responding to that demand. Um, hopefully the build materials have improved with the times. Let's have a look. On the interior, I would say the only thing that I really see that has kind of a retro feel is the upholstery and the curtains. Everything else, the cabinetry and the countertops, is still kind of their same, the same old stuff that they're using right now. Still can't get away from the cheap build factor completely. It's always little stuff like this, I guess. I mean, I guess it's... This. It seems like you just kind of have to go into it with the attitude of, well, it is an RV or it is a trailer or whatever. But you'd never say that if you were buying a house, if you were having a house built brand new. This is a 25 foot wilderness by Heartland. Come on and take a look. It's kind of a different floor plan. First thing that stuck out to me as being a little different is it's got this bar with a bench on one side and room for stools on the other. But as a workspace, this would actually be quite nice. Someone could work here, someone could work at the dinette or on the couch. Pretty simple kitchen. This could also double as food preparation space, obviously. I don't really like it when these have that gap, but whatever. Um, pretty straightforward bathroom. There is also another door in the bedroom. Peek around that corner. And let's see what we've got. Half storage underneath. Some pretty deep storage in there. Yeah, it's a really cool floor plan. I've not seen something like this before. All they have to do is put chunky off-road tires on it for me to like it. Um, we don't have ATVs, so we don't have a need for the front, but what we'd like to do is chop the front of the frame off and re-weld the tongue back on. Then we get a cool little off-road trailer. Obviously, we wouldn't really do that, but it's cool to see trailers designed with ground clearance in mind, especially where we're going to be going. Look inside. So we haven't featured many bunkhouse models before because we don't have kids. But for those of you that do, these are pretty cool. They've got little bunks for children in there. We got a full-size bathroom in here. Pretty cool. I was expecting a wet bath. Little kitchen. Flimsy little dinette. But they don't have that stupid hardback plywood there, which is really nice. And I have no problem sleeping sideways in the front of my trailer, so I think that's a cool design for that. Overall, not quite a build as well as we'd like, but gives us something to think about. This is the Palomini by Palomino. 
Absolutely. This is a Rockwood Ultra 5, 26 footer. Come on, have a look. One of the first things that Steve noticed is that the dinette doesn't have that part that comes here, so that is bound to be a lot more comfortable. Also, I would say this probably has more windows than than a lot of the bumper poles do. And this is the master suite. You have to, this one, you have to walk through the bathroom to oh, get to the bedroom. Cool. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> I just noticed because I was standing outside. <laughs> Looks like there's cars right. under there. Yeah, quite a, quite a big wardrobe. This is all connected. <laughs> Lift that bed up. Let's see how much there is under there. A half? Have a look, see. Not even a half. Hmm. Look at this little guy. Because of those drawers. Oh, we got a big closet in here. In, in the bathroom? Oh, that's nice for all your toiletries. Because this one, I mean, this is this one is pretty dang big. This is all connected. This is about as big oh, as our hang up closet one. is now. Dang. One of your favorites? I can't decide. I like it. What do you think, Steven? This is probably one of my favorites, mainly because of how big and open this is in here. I haven't seen a front kitchen where they use this little slant before to prepare food. It definitely feels open. We could entertain people here. A lot of room. 26 footer, which um, it's got a slide, so I'm comparing it to the Airstreams we looked at, the 25 foot and the 27 foot, this feels way bigger. With the slide, it makes a big difference. It does. But we haven't seen anything that's even close to the quality of the Airstreams. But these are doable. I think I think we can make it happen. I'm still seeing stuff that I don't like to see. Yeah, like I, I would love to see them put less money into, you know, the super, you know, fancy molding and have them just put it into better quality overall. But that's just me. You can see the kitchen sink in here. So this is your under the sink storage, which is also accessible from the outside. Which would make it a really good place to put things like cleaners. I wish I could like take the elements that I like because I could do without the second exit and you know just kind of reallocate the use of money you know what I mean and like take this out simplify some of the molding get simpler and better looking upholstery but I don't make RVs so I can't do that we were just walking by this one and noticed how nice the big back window is it's also got windows on either side. It's kind of nice. Especially if you have a stalker. Especially if you have a stalker. All right, so we're digging this floor plan, except this weird vinyl thing to keep light out, I guess. But they screwed the snap in over the screw that holds the fantastic fan in. Thumbs down. Come on, guys. Not so cool. You can tell we're in the toy hauler section because the graphics get really pointy. They look like those barbed wire tattoos that guys have. And they've got the LED lights all over, speakers on the outside, TVs on the outside. Basically, we applaud them for catering to younger people like us. But I think they went a little too far and they're going for the X Games Monster Energy drinking 35 year old guy who goes to the gym every day. Not quite our cup of tea. This is an Ascend by Evergreen, which we've been wanting to stick our heads in an Evergreen. We like them online. Let's see what they're like in person. It's a little 18 footer. So it's a small little guy, but And that didn't just happen. You did not see me pull this off of that guy's 
Sorry, Gentry family. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Gentry family that already bought this. Didn't mean to pull off your light shades here. Might want to talk to the dealer about getting that put on a little better. Uh, not super impressed yet. It's kind of normal. They don't have an annoying strip up there, which is nice. Nothing else has really blown me away on this. Not bad, not great. Okay, even though we're not full-time on the road, I'm failing to understand why you would need a separate entrance just to the bad bedroom. It's not that difficult to walk in from the other one. Maybe on these longer ones it's great, but I don't imagine myself being outside and being like, I gotta get in the bedroom right now! Or being in the bedroom saying, I gotta get out right now and I can't walk down the hall. Don't quite understand that. Maybe you guys can clue us in as to why someone would want that. This is an Everlight by Evergreen. Similar floor plan to some of the other ones that we've seen, but yeah, it's, it's nice. It's not bad. Peekaboo! I wonder if there's any under the bed storage. That's pretty. Alright. Okay, this is about the 75th hardback dinette thing. Dear RV industry, nobody loves these. If you would please eliminate them forever, we would appreciate it. Seriously, why does everyone build them that way? This bathroom is huge though. Quality's pretty good in here. Here's where your closet is. So that's why this is oh, that's nice. No, that's not, not nice. That caulking not job? Really. By nice Horrid. By nice I meant not nice. You guys Gross. knew what I meant. So, here's another little tip for you guys. If you ever see Jensen speakers or stereo or TV, you know they're trying to cut costs there. Which might be fine. That might be a good place to cut costs. But to me, it usually indicates they're cutting costs everywhere. On the microwave, on the stove. And even though this is, I mean, this is a $37,000 trailer. That's not a cheap one for a bumper pull. I'd expect better than Jensen in it. All right, this is a Black Rock 22 RKS, which means rear kitchen. S means it's special. I don't know what S means. But it has Trek floors, rubber floors, kind of like a deck. Um, not a ton of windows, but we really like the quality. So the cabinets are huge in this thing, and they feel good. And you can feel inside the way they screw these together, they screw the screws all the way down this way. I forget what that's called, but we like that. Um, tons of storage. Look at the size of this thing. This, I can't even reach the back. Really big storage right there on this slide. And they're willing to break the mold and not have the horrible back piece of wood there. They have another cool thing, um, all these pads you flip over and they're vinyl on the other side for kids if they're spilling stuff. That's kind of cool. Or messy adults like me because I spill a lot of stuff. Um, tons of storage in here. This is a 26 footer even though it's called a 22 RKS. Don't know why they did that, but they did. Pretty normal bathroom. One of the features we like that the salesman told us about is this has heated tanks and it's fully insulated. It's a true four season bumper pull. Um, over here, I don't know why this bugs me so much to have an analog switch. I usually like simple things that don't break and that might be simple that doesn't break but that thing looks so 1965. In here the bedroom's fine. Tons of storage in here once again. And for once, we saw a full, it opens all the way. Now, even though you can only access half of this, there's a cubby to pass through. Really like that. Super awesome feature here is a sink with a mirror in the bedroom. So, Teresa can be getting ready while I'm taking a shower. I don't occupy both. That's pretty cool. Um, I love the quality. It feels pretty solid. I don't... I want more windows. It still feels very box-like, but we're going in the right direction. This is a Black Rock 22 RKS rear kitchen, super duper special. It's cool. It's worth checking out. Oh, also, thank goodness this one comes pre-wired for solar, which we're not seeing very much of, and that's very important to us. So, thumbs up there. Okay. 
All right, this is the Micro Mini by Winnebago. And as you know, we are kind of disheartened by Winnebago in the past. But I stand corrected. I like this. I like the lighter cabinetry. It looks bigger, brighter. We don't like the fake age stuff, but that's okay. This quality's not that bad, actually, especially compared to the other ones we were looking at. I like that this opens all the way up instead of part way. Um, I like that they have not used a dinette because we could sit here at the couch, put the table out, do our computer work, plug in right there. That could actually work really well. It's cute, it's quaint, and it seems to be better built than the other ones we looked at. This is cheesy. Wow, that's super cheesy. But if you're really careful, it might last you a year or two. Sink. They've got the spigot like right at the end. I don't know why they do that. I don't know if it's to save money, but I'd want my sink out here so I could actually wash my hands instead of having to go way up in there. But I'm pleasantly surprised with Winnebago on this one. Kind of a cool little trailer. Good size. We could actually do this. This is a 24 and a half foot Winnebago Mini. Um, similar motif to uh, the other Winnebago we just saw. I do like that they've simplified this stuff. That is one thing. I don't know why that just gets my hackles up, but it does. And this is actually a lot simpler. Um, again, the, the cabinetry is a lighter finish. We don't like kind of the aged look that they do. Um, I don't love the hardware, but really, I mean, just having the cabinets a lighter color makes it feel like the whole place does feel a lot like bigger and <laughs> less cave-like. Um, the dinette still has this, but this upholstery still isn't my taste, but it's closer to my taste than a lot of what's out there. This one is a bunkhouse, so that's pretty cool for 24 and a half feet. Let's take a peek in the bathroom. Same shower curtain. Wow. This is the wardrobe. For the kids, for the bunkhouse, I'm sure. We're still going. Alright. What do you think? It's pretty cool. I'm impressed. I didn't expect this from Winnebago. That is the only wardrobe, though, in this place. Okay. That being said, this is probably top three for me. I really like the layout. I like that they've done away with the tackiness. I like the simple design. Don't like this thing on the dinette, but we don't need a bunkhouse model, but thumbs up Winnebago, you've surprised us. Having a lighter color makes it so much more comfortable and open feeling. Absolutely. Good job Winnebago. All right, this is the R-Pod. We really like the exterior design of the R-Pod. I don't know if it's because it's the Hood River Edition, but we like the green. There's no giant swirls all over the side of it. Thank you, somebody, for not doing that. Come on in. We first found out about the R-Pod from one of our YouTube viewers who asked us what we thought about them, and we hadn't seen one yet. I really like the feel of the cabinetry and the colors that they went with. Dig this little window. Now, this is a... Oh. Minus, oh, there we go. It's removable. If you don't like curtains, you just pull them off. I don't want to do that because I don't want to break something. A little bit light duty there. Um, small fridge, but it's a small unit, and that's okay. We're glad they got the memo on dinettes that nobody loves, those really hard backs. And we like the idea of kind of a floating table because most dinettes, you sit like this, and you'd have to work on your keyboard like that, which we're not big fans of. So being able to move this is cool. Um, tiny little wardrobe in here. This is a little 18 footer. It's a little guy, uh, super uncomfortable mattress, but I like the way it's positioned and you know, I love window. I don't think we'd even feel it behind the van pulling this thing because they are so light. Anyway, thank you to the YouTube subscriber who recommended this. We're going to have to check them out further. Oh, hi there! This is the StarCraft Launch 22. Just having a soak in this tub here. Let's go have a look.
Tell us more about it. Um, pretty decent windows. We always like it when they do have a bedroom window, whether it's at the front or the back. Look at that huge shelf up there. Yeah, it's not enclosed. These are usually, they seem to be enclosed, but not so much. But little, little wardrobes on either side of the bed. Let's see if we got any storage under here, and we do. Oh, wow. Oh, and you can access the um, undercarriage as well. See? Sweet. Ooh. Tell them how we hate these. Um, Steve hates these. I wish it was flush, but I appreciate the fact that they're trying to do something so you can also use that as counter space. Oh, yeah, they got a little shoe cubby. I like it when they do that. Nice. A pretty generous sized dinette since there's no couch in here. They gave you quite a bit of seating and also one of these tables that you can move around quite a bit, which is nice. And it's not a nasty dinette. Yeah, and this is a pretty big fridge, it seems like, for the size of this trailer. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. This is our favorite for the price. This one's 18000 <laughs> Definitely favorite for the price. This is kind of an interesting feature. This is a little little door that comes into the not just the bunk house, like it's it's actually the bunk bed so the children can like sneak out in the night. Interesting. This is the StarCraft One Extreme. Come on inside. It's a tiny little thing, but it's got tons of ground clearance, and we think we haven't even looked at the camp, the tent trailers that have the pop out thing. I think that would be fun, not for full time, but that would sure be fun to have for weekend stuff. I'd love to sleep out there with the bug net and visibility everywhere. Let's see. I'm betting this is a wet bath just because of how tiny this. Is. Oh my goodness! Extra points there. Not a wet bath. This thing has enough ground clearance, you could actually do the white rim trail in Moab on it. So, we would haul this place as a trailer should not be hauled, but I think it'd be kind of fun. Well, overall, we had a good and enlightening day. The thing that was nice about this was it allowed us to see a lot of different brands in a short amount of time. And there were some surprises along the way, which was good. It was... Um, when we've done a lot of the shopping, we weren't looking a ton at the bumper poles. So now that we're looking specifically at bumper poles, um, yeah, it was good to see a lot more of that quick. So a few surprises. I saw my first Lance trailer, and there's this dude on RV.net who loves his Lance and brags about it like it's the greatest thing ever. I wasn't impressed with Lance. Um, I wasn't impressed with Evergreen. I thought I was going to be super impressed with them. They were expensive. I didn't feel much better than the others. I was impressed with Winnebago. We hated the ones we saw when we went to the last dealer, but maybe the dealer just let them fall apart. So we liked Winnebago's designs. We liked the R-Pod by Forest River. And there was one other one we really liked. We liked Keystone and Cougar a lot more than we thought we would. So yeah, I echo what Teresa said. It was great to come. I'm glad we did. We got to see a lot at one place. But I'm exhausted. This is an exhausting process and it's hard to keep track, keep everything straight. So if you are going to buy an RV, go to an RV show, walk through every single model and you'll start to see what you like and what you don't. Would have been nice if Airstream had been here so we could have com you know, compared with what we fantasize as being the best thing ever compared to how we look at everything else. We haven't seen anything else that matches Airstream's quality. But there's a lot of new technology that's not making it into the Airstreams that we like to see here. So that was cool to see improvements and updates that we didn't see at the Airstream dealer. So are we any closer? Mm, not really, but we're more informed and hopefully you're more informed from watching this video. Thanks for watching.